When we think of ancient pyramids all over the world, we often see them as once sacred grounds for religious rituals or grand tombs for the ancient elite. But what if I told you these architectural marvels served another purpose for the civilizations who built them? So today I'm here just outside of San Miguel de Allende and I'm visiting La Cañada de Virgen. And this is an ancient structure. It was a very sacred site here in the historic times of Mesoamerica. And in this video, I'm going to explore how this pyramid was constructed to manage resources key to indigenous people's survival and how it was built in alignment with the sky to measure something we all wish we had more of, time. You're gonna learn all of this with the help of an expert. So we're going on a tour today led by Dr. Rosanna Quiros, an astronomer and archeologist who's part of the staff at Lunativa, a center for research and education on Mesoamerican culture. And uh, she's gonna take us around and tell us about the history of the place from an astronomical perspective. What we like to do as astronomers always is count count the number of bodies, count the number of steps, count the number of rooms, no? Because many times the number of the steps is related to an understanding of the organization of the cosmos as well. There are three elements that you will always find in the sites, in the codexes, in the sculptures, and in the stories that indigenous people tell. And those three elements are a mountain, a cave, and water. It's easy to remember for a very simple reasons. Every one of us comes from a mountain that has a cave that sprouts water before we were born. Cañada de la Virgen is an archaeological site in central Mexico, located near San Miguel de Allende, Guanajuato. Carbon-14 dating indicates the site was occupied from around 540 to 1050 AD. The pyramid likely served multiple purposes for the indigenous people who built and used it. That's because they were sophisticated architects and engineers. For example, the pyramid has a sunken patio that also served as a drainage system for rainwater they collected. So they were managing water. Oh, okay. See, that's it's like a plumbing the, system. Exactly. See, like a plumbing system. So we know that they they were not looking for the whole thing to be filled but more saving the water in the extremes of the sunken patio in this particular case we know because of the different drainages that we found in this particular building that they were managing water thoroughly yes. and it's interesting to think about that because we're in the semi-desert so a technology that allows you to manage water Wow. It's not all ceremonial. It also has to do with survival. It sounds like they had it all figured out, right? So why did this once thriving center for life in the region later become abandoned? Well, it's likely because of the time frame of its existence. The site was most active during a transitional phase that occurred between the late classic and early post-classic horizons of Mesoamerica. The people of this time period experienced a rise of militarism due to destabilization in the region. Climate change also forced northern agricultural communities to move elsewhere. Getting to the pyramid takes a bit of work. From its visitor center, you hop on a bus that then takes you to a drop-off point. And from there, you have about a one-mile hike to the entrance of the ceremonial site. They were looking for a sense of secrecy. Yes, it's a pilgrimage site and they were expecting people to come in certain dates of the year. But still, they wanted to have a sense of privacy, seclusion. That's why you cannot see the temple unless you're very close by. You cannot see it from San Miguel, you cannot see it from the highway. No, you have to be very close by to be able to spot the building. And that's intentional. 
For visitors both past and present, this site is not the easiest way to access the site. So why then would people who built this place construct such an inconvenient entrance? From my point of view, no, and many other astronomers in Mesoamerica, it's astronomical reasons. Mm. No? So you will find that the paths are uh, inclined to a certain date of the solar position in a particular day of the year. Right. No? So that's the reason of the alignment, mm. the direction that they are asking you to walk towards to. So when you go to archaeological sites, the first thing that I recommend people to do is place yourself in relation to the directions of the sky. Ask yourself where is east, where is west, where is north, where is south. So how, how are they asking me to move? In this case, we were heading west, or in other words, the direction that the sun sets. But what's another word to say that the sun sets from a pre-Hispanic point of view? The sun dies. Oh. It's different, right? See. Si. It's not the same to say from a western point of view the sun is setting, no? Mm -hmm. Than to say the sun is dying. The sun is entering the underworld. Ah, uh, okay. No, it's a completely <laughs> different way to see that the sun is born every day and dies every day. So life and death are always present in your life mm. every day. No. That's where the journey starts, no? Wow. See? The builders of the pyramid were not just architects but also skilled timekeepers. They built this pyramid to also serve as a tool for telling what time of year it was, simply by observing the sun's position relative to the temple's entrance. The date in which the sun aligns with the entrance is the 17th of April. Then the sun walks to the solstice and then comes back on August 25th. So it's not equinoxes and it's not solstices. Those are dates that are related to the start of the rainy season and the peak of the rainy season, the alignment in the eastern direction. Mm. And the alignment towards the western direction is March 4th and then again after the solstice it comes back October 9th. So those are the four relevant dates. Ah, okay. See, that's the blessing of the seeds on March, early March, and then the harvest, early October. So those the are the- fourth and the ninth. Uh -huh. March 4th, October 9th. Uh -huh. Okay. See, blessing of the seeds, and then in October, the harvest. Okay. So everything is related to farming and life. There's strong evidence that the ancient inhabitants of La Cañada weren't alone in their approach. That's because, according to research, the use of pyramids as giant timekeeping structures was a common phenomenon among other ancient Mesoamerican societies. So that's it. And before we wrap up, I wanna know what you all thought. Let me know in the comments what you found most interesting or most fascinating about this particular site here in Mexico. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching this episode of World of Nuance. I will see you in the next one. Until then, take care.